Hiya, I'm staying in a B&B in East Galway and it's on the farm. And when I told the farmer that I was going around making videos on the bike, he said to me, I have a very interesting farm, let me come and show it to you. And not only that, there's people who have come and visited here who've had the living daylight scared out of them. So I said, lead on. Christmas Pat Noon hasn't just geese, but horses, chickens and puppies. And not only that, he has plenty of wellies if you want to follow him around his land. And you do follow. Pat was a heavy smoker, but he's given all that up and now he moves at speed. People come here camping, so they do. It's about a 10 acre field, there's some standing stones on it. The field has two standing stones in it, a larger one and a smaller one. The smaller one worn smooth by visitors. This is the fertility stone. Uh -huh. This is where people would come to sit on or be with. So they would. People that has intef energy fields and diviners and all that they can feel the horrid draw to it. And Pat says people still come to the stone, but they're coy about it. Dead could come here under the disguise of looking at the, the standing stones themselves or maybe the railway wall or different things. And how would you feel about when they tell you that? Do you think it's silly or what do you oh think? Oh God, no. There is healing from the land. Pat says he himself heals using copper wire. I bring the, I bring the copper wire down over you nice and slowly and I bring it right up again and I can feel the weight of the wire lifting off the the, 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 the bad energy off your body and freeing you up. And what kind of things do you cure? I don't proclaim to cure anything. You cure yourself. Okay. But I free up your mind and I free up your body and your third eye and all that, I release the energy. Everybody has good energy in their body. We will go down here and to the entrance to the other world, the fairy kingdom, where the black thorn and the white thorn meets, when you go through it, you may find something and you may not. Some people find great energy, but I will not tell you unless you find it yourself. I stand here for a second, Ron. You will feel a serious peace. You can feel the wind. You're in a different world. You can feel this serious, serious peace. You can feel the breeze, the inner peace. And was the times you needed it? Of course. When? Any times, uh, especially when my mother passed away suddenly. I used to get great, great, uh, great uh, peace here. And when my brother-in-law was caught up in the tragedy in 9-11 in New York City. He could remember when he was in the building, he was in the bottom floor of it, the only thing he could remember was the fairy field here and a big ash tree that I have over there and me smoking cigarettes in it. That's, that was his picture. He didn't know whether he was going to make it or not, but that was his picture of it. That was his image in his mind. That was his image in his mind. In 9-11? In 9-11. That was the only image he had. Oh, you're standing on top of a, where a chieftain was buried. A Bronze Age burial ground. Maybe two and a half, three thousand years old. As you see around here, those white thorn bushes, they're associated with the fairies. My father had never cleared any of those. And they are no good on land, as the modern farmer will tell you, only taking up space where you could feed an extra cow. But he would not cut them or have anything to do with them. They were belonged to the fairies and the other world, and they were left there, and I live in them there. And that's the way it should be. They were keepers of the, of the land. They kept the land sacred. 
I have a fairy fort up there. I put people up there camping and they all got afraid in it at night. Two or three people, different nationalities. One was an Italian, one was an American and one was Irish. And uh, they all got afraid at night and left it. What happened? They got scared. Of what? Uh, none of them would say, but the, the American told me it was the fairies. The, the Italian girl, she was a scientist, she would not admit to it. But she was a skeptic, I gave her two lamps, three lamps to come up here and she came into the kitchen that night at 12 o'clock and she was afraid. And she was started looking for a Catholic church next morning. Well, what happened to her? I don't know, she wouldn't say. She would not say what happened. But the American told us that uh, he thought it was me that was playing tricks on him. I had gone to a funeral and hadn't come home for all hours in the morning. He said that I, I opened the tent and rubbed his face. And uh, he thought I was joking until Evelyn, my wife, came into the kitchen and he went straight for her to ask her. And she said, it wasn't him, he was at a funeral. He's not that long home and I was getting a bit from her as well for not coming home in time. Because we had a good few pints in. But uh, he stayed with us in the house then. He got afraid of the fairies and the fairy world. And he thought that the... You, you think the fairies opened the tent and I'm, stroked his face? I have no doubt about it. I have no. I had, I had great experiences here with the fairies in my time here. I had gone astray with them. What I had, do you mean? I, they put the stray on me. What does that mean? Uh, you don't recognise where you're going. You cross it, you don't know where you're going. I ended up above a new inn. I was lucky I wasn't drowned. And it wore off me and then I could come home. You don't know your own field, your own house. You won't even know your own people. When did that happen? That happened about maybe 10 years ago. It is, uh, it's called the stray. It has happened to a lot of people along the way. A lot of people has had it happen to them. Even people of today, if you're driving along the road in a car and you miss your turn and you could go 15 miles out away, mm. that is part of it. Everyone has drove along the road and for that 30, 40 seconds, they don't recognise where they are. That is the fairy stray. But it could be just concentration or it could be... Oh, it can be a lot of things. Of course you can put it down to a lot of things. Or you might be stressed, like you might be distracted with uh, grief or something like it that. It can happen, that is true. We can't argue that. But the old people said, when you go out in a fairy field, you should bring a pocket of stones. No one ever knew what the pocket of stones was for. But if you've seen a river and a road, when you're in this trance, you don't know the road from the river. What do you do when you see a road? You go jump. And if you've seen a river, you think you'd go jump into it and you were drowned. You always throw the stone in to see if there is splash. The fairies, they love hunting. They absolutely love the hunting. The hunting with the foxes, the hunting with the hounds. A lot of the time here, if you had horses here, the horses would be tired. The fairies would be up on their backs at night. It was a known fact, anyone that ever had horses here, they would be jaded tired if they ever had to do farm work with them. And the fairies, what did they look like? They're the very same as people. They're the very same as people. The Americans ruling the fairies, putting wings on them and tails and hats and coats and all this. The fairies is the very same as us. Not quite as tall, maybe 5'11", five, 5'6", five, that sort of height. They are not tall people. They dress in green, green and red, so they do. Their clothes are green and red. And this is the main spot for the fairies on Pat's land, the fairy fort. It's a lovely spot to camp. It's a lovely place to camp, but I wouldn't camp on it. Would you not? No. Why not? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't upset the fairies. If you upset the fairies, does God help you then? So it is. I would not camp in it. I would not cut any trees off here or burn any wood off this place. They're nasty little devils, are they? They're not really. They play tricks with you. Yeah. They are not nasty. They're, they play tricks with you. Is, and, uh, there, is there any good to them at all, though? There is good to them. There is good to them. If you want to, you can ask for a, a favour off the fairies. Can you? You can. Like what? If you were sick, you can ask for a favour. Oh. But they will ask for one back. Have you ever asked them? No. Well, I never asked them because I'd be afraid what they'd ask me back. What do they ask back? 
they don't, you don't know. They could ask for another life. It could be one for one. So you never ask for something that you don't know anything about. So you, if you wanted someone cured, they might ask for you? I wouldn't I even ask. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask the fairies. But they have serious power. They have serious power. We have had great luck here on our farm with them, with livestock and all our, 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 our animals. We never have any outbreaks of serious diseases or anything to that. And as I said to you, we were never rich, but we were never poor. We always had enough to eat. And that's the main thing. That's all you want. And we have peace of mind. Pat Noon, Kilconnell, East Galway.